Uh, but the, the thing that has happened in Australia, Evan, is some ETFs have closed down. And I think one of the fears is that people who buy into an ETF and they think, oh, this is a great ETF. I'm really excited about this opportunity. But it doesn't really seem to get much traction. Like other investors aren't as excited about it. It doesn't really grow. And then they hear, they get news that the, the ETF is closing down. Uh, can you just describe kind of what happens in that process? And um, maybe if then we'll talk about like how maybe we can identify those ETFs. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, yeah, unfortunately, that's, uh, that's something that, that happens from time to time. Um, so there's there's probably a couple of reasons that, that an issuer would look to, to close an ETF. One is, is due to a, a, a one-off event. Um, that's not really something that's happened much in Australia. But um, for example, 2020, we saw offshore, we saw a lot of things like leveraged oil ETFs. When um, mm. COVID struck, oil price fell through the floor. Uh, and in fact, the, the near-term futures contracts actually went into negative territory back in back in March in 2020. So mm. we saw some things like leveraged oil. Those funds just went to zero, so they were forced to terminate. Uh, we've got the situation at the moment of, uh, again, offshore funds holding predominantly Russian assets at the moment. Are, many of those are suspended, and there's potential that they'll have to liquidate in the near future and potentially for uh, very little value. Mm. Um, but I guess the most common scenario is where an ETF has been launched, has sat on the shelf for a few years, failed to really get any uh, traction with investors. Um, it's not to say there's anything particularly wrong with the ETF. It just hasn't uh, hasn't become you know hasn't either had the right market timing or hasn't been promoted sufficiently in the right segments uh, for one reason or another. There's not that much investor interest in the fund, um, and in that case, an ETF issuer can choose to, to close down the fund. And in doing that, it's, it's um, you know, in some ways, it's in the ETF issuer's interest because they have costs and, and things associated with the fund, but it's also in, in the investor's interest as well. So if you're sitting in a fund with, with very little activity in it, bid offer spreads are going to be wider than they would be on, a, on an active fund. So there's costs of getting in and out aren't necessarily... Um, in, in the investor's favor. There's things like any fixed costs in the fund over a very small fund will be larger in terms of percentage costs. So it's actually more costly and, and not really in the best interest of the end investor to, um, uh, you know, to continue on with, those, with certain funds at least. Mm. Now we saw a few ETFs in the last couple of years, uh, particularly, and you talked about like investor interest. I think that's one of the big key things that I've, I've noticed is not enough investors investing in the fund to make it profitable for the ETF provider. So it's just being aware, you know, most of the big ETF providers, ETF securities included, to put a lot of time and care, right, into picking which ETFs to offer because of that, because they don't want to launch a product and then it just kind of, no one really invests in it. That's kind of defeats the purpose. So um, one of the things that's interesting to know, Evan, is, is would investors have a chance to sell out? Like, would they get a notification to say this ETF is going to be closed on X date, you can either sell it or you can hold on to it and then we'll give you the cash. Is that typically what happens? Yeah, yeah. So usually, uh, and there's there's some discretion around this from 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 uh, uh, from ETF issuers and also um, there'll be some differences in terms of, um, you know, again, the underlying sort of constitutions of funds and what they're allowed to do and what they aren't allowed to do. But from experience, uh, what we've generally seen in the market here is that, that um, the, the issuer will make an announcement. So that'll be a public announcement that goes out via the ASX or, um, and that will then get picked up by things like uh, brokerage um, firms. So they'll, they'll display that on their, um, on their pages for a particular security, uh, for a particular ETF. Um, and then, you know, news wires and things will pick that up as well. So it'll be in the public domain. Also, any existing investors will, will get notified via the registry. So they'll receive either an email or a, or a letter communicating to them that the fund is going to terminate. And what usually happens is that there's a, a period of, uh, I guess, post-announcement trading. So that'll be normal trading. Market makers will still be in place. They'll still be, tra they'll still be offering to buy and sell units at close to the NAV at any point in time. Um, so trading will carry on as normal. So people have the option to exit via the secondary market so they can they can trade out on exchange just sell on their brokerage accounts they they have a certain window during which they can do that or they can stay in the fund and be liquidated when the fund terminates so at that point the the etf issuer will sell down all the remaining securities in the fund uh, 
and determine the final liquidation value and then distribute that equally on a per unit basis to holders. So it's kind of like um, they give you a fair warning. Then you have a choice. You can go into your brokerage account, sell it, or you can wait for them to liquidate it. I imagine most people would probably sell it if they're um, in that situation. Um, and I imagine the, the key concern for people would be either capital gains or capital losses at that point. How do they um, manage that for their own affairs? So that's good to know. I, get, I think the, the kind of key takeaway there is just be aware of what's being announced by the ETF uh, issuer and, and in your brokerage account, if you click that news mm. and announcements tab, I think that's, that's key there.